Yes, yes I am. Yeah, if you could tell a joke or something, that'd be great. Okay, here we go. Chaos value metrics. <clears throat> My name's Andy. Very nice to see all of you here in the audience today. Uh, I'm going to be talking about value metrics. Uh, chaos, as you all probably know, has got four uh, working groups. Value metrics is one of the four and um, it's quite possibly the newest working group. So this is the first time you've, if this is the first time you've heard about value metrics, the reason is it's never been spoken to um, at uh, ChaosCon before. Um, with the value metrics group, we are very much in discovery mode and I really encourage questions, any kind of feedback, or uh, comments you have as we go along, I'd love to hear them. So what I'm prepared to do today is give a little introduction uh, to our group. I wanna tell you about what types of help we would like to have going forward. And as I said, um, really value discussion. So on this slide, uh, I have to admit, I made a change to this slide in reaction to Matt's presentation. Can anyone guess? Uh, the change I made was, in my original edit, my name was first. So, <laughs> that probably says something about my psychology, but uh, I did make that change on the fly. Thank you, Matt. Uh, we've got an awesome group of core contributors. Um, we've been working on this for four or five months together. Uh, the, the common thread that we have is that we are all software people. And um, we would like to sort of expand um, the, uh, the type of uh, participants as we go forward. I'll talk about that as, as, we, get into, um, as we get into the talk. Uh, we do have um, a live meetup every other Friday. Everybody's welcome. So we've got uh, a really nice repo and uh, working documents. Go there and browse and you'll find our meeting times. We'd love to have you. Okay, so let's talk about uh, just the definition of value metrics. What are we talking about? So primarily we're talking about metrics that indicate economic value. Uh, so, you know, a lot of the discussions are actually, you know, putting economics sort of on the back burner, uh, but here in the value group, you know, they're, they're front and center. And when we talk about economics, primarily we're talking about uh, financial metrics, things like cost to fix a bug, uh, time to launch a project. So, you know, project velocity has very much of an economic component in, in just a whole ton of business domains. Uh, recruiting is a recurring theme that comes up. Open source for business certainly has got a relevance to recruiting. Um, people are using open source to build brands. Um, you know, Red Hat, uh, just, just had a mighty sale, uh, mighty acquisition, um, tremendous brand value there. So what we're talking about with value metrics are economic values, uh, things that can be primarily expressed in dollars and cents. And the common themes that, um, that run through value metrics, uh, these metrics are used to gauge a competitive advantage and to help people compare sort of one situation to another to guide business decisions. And that's, that's our primary focus with value metrics. And the goal by focusing on these metrics is to grow the, the number of people that can par participate in open source. Um, what we want to focus on, you know, primarily are the production of metrics. And my own belief is that once we have the metrics in place, that, that frameworks will come up to help businesses streamline business decisions. And by doing that, um, I think it's going to create just a huge amount of opportunity for new people to come in and, and make a living in open source. Uh, right now, the valuation of open source from a business perspective, you know, it has very heavy components of sort of craft and, and um, 
there is very heavy components of being a kind of a wizard and a, and a thought leader and an opinion leader. And my belief is that if we can reduce things down to dollars and cents, that it's going to allow people to make, normal people to make business decisions that expand the opportunity for people who work in open source. And here's just an example of, of Bill Gates saying, hey, you know, we really, we really blew it uh, on the business velocity perspective of, of, you know, building open source software for the phone. And uh, he lost uh, potentially a $400 billion opportunity that would have employed a whole ton of open source developers had, had he won that. So what we'd like to do is to grow the, the, the pie, grow the number of people that can participate. Now, when you talk about metrics, I mean, there's literally thousands of ways that you can apply value metrics to you know, dozens of different use cases. And so for us to get started, we're really focused just on two audiences. One is the open source program office manager. So the metrics that we produce are designed to help that person uh, answer the question, you know, how can I go and, and justify my program to my management? You know, there's gonna be management pressures in terms of budget allocation and, and um, justification for the existence or establishing an open source program office. I'd like to be able to put metrics into the hands of that manager so they can go to their, their uh, decision makers and have some real numbers to show how uh, there's business value in investing in open source program office. So that's one audience. And, and the other audience that we are focused on is actually the open source software contributor. So that person out there in the street who really would like to, loves to write code, would like to make a, a wage and to actually you know, be able to raise a family and, and pay the rent in open source. And uh, so one of the questions that we've been focused on is how can that person make a living wage in, in open source? And one of the interesting sort of realities about, about these two audiences that we're talking about here is that uh, you know, the, the, the needs of the two different audiences are you know, oftentimes in conflict. You know, a lot of times uh, justification for open source program office is, hey, we can get a whole ton of free labor, you know, to come and, and, and work on our, um, you know, to work on our, our programs. So just figuring out strategies for contributors where they can make a legitimate, you know, working wage, something that's sustainable, something that's stable is something personally that I would like to have as an outcome for this project. <laughs> So um, we started work on value metrics uh, around April and in the first four months of our life, uh, basically we just got the program up and running from scratch. Uh, we've got tooling, we've got work process. Uh, we published a set of initial metrics a few weeks ago. Uh, we've got a, a core community and, and contributors um, and uh, we've got a roadmap uh, to move forward. And the roadmap to move forward is um, uh, two, two major things. One is um, over the next few months, uh, we wanna have a demo implementation of the metrics that we published in, in July. Uh, so we're gonna be using Augur, we're gonna be using Greenmore to figure out you know, what, are, what are some simple things uh, that we can do to you know, go from just a readme page to a live working uh, software example. And one of the interesting things about uh, our value metrics is that a lot of the metrics that, that we have, I think are gonna be slightly different than the other groups in that they're, they're very much uh, pr parameter driven. So we will look at things like, for example, the cost to close a bug. As, a, as an economic metric. And the, the actual cost depends on your labor rate. And, and we know that labor rates vary geography by geography, organization by organization. So one of the things that we will do is, um, is to you know, do, sp do some exploration around parameter driven metrics and to figure out, see if we can figure out best practice for, uh, for doing that. Uh, the other thing that we will do is 
we would like to add a steering committee. So um, as a group right now, we, we are, um, we've got a kind of a uniform profile. We're all software people. Uh, we would like to add a couple of different perspectives uh, to our group. Um, open source program managers and economic experts. Uh, I'd like to get uh, somewhere between two and four uh, folks onto our steering committee. And what we're gonna ask of the steering committee is, um, is actually pretty lightweight. We'd like them to review our metrics as they are published, uh, typically on a, on a twice a year schedule. So we're gonna ask for a review and some feedback, kind of a half a day's involvement. Uh, so that's, that's something that we're gonna do to try and increase the, uh, the amount of um, uh, perspective that we get. And when we talk about economic experts, um, this is the profile of person that we're looking for. We'd like to get economists, investment bankers, financial analysts, strategy consultants, I mean, you know, an ideal person would be that, that uh, uh, M&A banker who, you know, got the Red Hat deal done. So they definitely have got, you know, frameworks and valuation models that they used. Uh, we'd like to have the perspective of those, those types of people uh, helping us out with value metrics. So if any, any of you know, um, if any of you know of people who fit that profile, uh, please you know, give me a shout. And one of the things that we're gonna ask this group to do is to give us some guidance in terms of the relative priority of, of the metrics that we're working with. And uh, for metrics in general, I, I think they are, are useful maybe in two different ways. Uh, one is sort of a discovery mode where we've just got a whole ton of metrics and we're trying to figure out, geez, in this, giant basket of metrics, you know, which ones seem most relevant to our particular situation. And then the other mode that metrics can be used is, is um, in a coordination mode. And um, uh, in the software business, just like every business, you know, there's just a huge uh, network of stakeholders that participate in the production of assets. Um, you've got the software developer, you've got the program manager, you've got the corporate finance person, and then beyond the corporate finance person, you've got, um, you know, perhaps a, a Wall Street creditor, maybe a trader. You know, they can all be viewed as, as being part of this, um, this big web of relationships. And what we know by looking at, um, by looking at other sort of economic systems is that you know, they don't run on a thousand signals. You know, typically what happens is you, you've got a consensus that builds up, you know, around, around one or two metrics and that, that is used to coordinate, you know, a whole slew of, of economic activity. Like for example, um, if you're a commodity trader, if you're trading corn, you know, one of the signals, one of the big signals that they use is weather forecast. You know, is it, is it gonna be drought or is it gonna be optimal growing conditions? And that one metric just guides a whole slew of economic activity, you know, all the way from the commodity trader down to the farmer, to the, the banker who provides finance to the farmer, to the tractor dealer, and, and so forth. So one of the challenges that we will have is, is you know, trying to, trying to sort of reduce down the number of signals into just a handful that then can be used to coordinate activity, you know, across the software supply chain. Uh, and I'm hopeful that if we get some more folks in the room, you know, who've got experts in, in economics and, and different types of financial systems, that that'll be helpful. So in addition to steering committee, um, uh, very soon we're gonna have um, working software that we can get our hands on with Augur. We've got Grimoire. Uh, we do want to uh, start building this out and to demonstrate, you know, live working uh, economic signals across a whole slew of software projects that we've identified. And we're gonna need help with that. So if you're a person who, who is hands-on, if you like to write documentation, if you know Docker, if you're a database person, uh, we would really would love to have your help. Uh, 
as I said before, all of our material, all of our materials are online. We've got um, we've got periodic live calls, and uh, I'm very interested in uh, any feedback or any any reaction that you've got, you know, either here or you know offline. Uh, be very interested to hear about what your interests are, um, what you think we should be focusing on. If you run an open source program office, I would really love to hear, you know, what do you do to justify your performance uh, to your managers? Is it, is it um, dollars and cents based? Is it more about brand or recruiting? You know, that, that kind of feedback is super uh, valuable for us. Um, what is the best way for us to engage with you, to keep you informed about the work that we're doing? Uh, that's the kind of feedback that we really would love to have. So that's all I have for my prepared notes. Uh, yes, Matt. So um, a lot of what you're talking about clearly is economic driven, right? Mm -hmm. So how does this, how would any of this potentially translate to say academic open source software projects that don't quite have that same structure, but they do want to generate value you know what I mean? But it's not the same dollars and cents kind of way. Crazy. You know, I guess it's hard to say, but, but one of the things that I, one of the things, I mean, this is, this is kind of a little bit speculation since I'm not, I'm not an academic myself, but I would believe that it would be powerful if, for example, Augur, um, and I, I don't know where the funding comes for Augur, I don't know what justification process you go through, but. I think it would be valuable if you could go to your sponsors and say, hey, guess what? Using, using student labor uh, and using the brain power that we have in the university, we've created an asset that would cost a commercial firm like $10 million to, to create. And I think that would be a powerful statement. Um, you know, a lot depends on your motivation for what you'd like to do with the software. Maybe some of the students would like to take the code and with their knowledge, you know, go out and, you know, pitch it as a startup company or, or raise financing. So some of those value metrics, I think would be really useful for that if, if people had that ambition. Does any of this like account for downstream impact? So like a library that would be widely? So uh, the question is, you know, what about maybe the wider ecosystem or, or looking at, you know, kind of the embedded value of a project that, that you use? And I think the answer is, yeah, that, that could be something that we look at, okay? So, so as I said, you know, in thinking about value metrics, there's just a whole slew of use cases that you might, you might choose to, you know, focus your, your target on. And so if people came back to us and said, hey, what I really would like to do is to show the economic value of all the open source stuff that, that I've incorporated into my own project for my own company, we could do that. So, we, you know, we can really aim the gun at wherever you all would, would like us to go. And right now we're, we're focused on those two use cases just because that's what we picked. But it's possible, it's possible for us to change direction and for sure if we decided to go down that path, that'd be really interesting. Yeah. Right. So one of the things I imagine would happen in, in that type of a world is that as a, as a grant maker, you could be looking at a situation where there's an inefficient use of funds. You know, perhaps you give one group a million bucks and you give another group a million bucks 
and they end up kind of recreating the wheel with, with no coordination between the two of them. So one way, and this is just kind of speculation, you know, one thing maybe that would be interesting would be to look at, use the economic value to be able to tell the grant maker, hey, I'm not reinventing the wheel, I'm reusing assets that you've already invested in, and maybe you could also use those numbers to say, oh look, here's a, here's a hole in your ecosystem where we need some investment, and maybe there could be coordination between grant makers to fill that hole, and you could use the, the economic metrics to show the grant makers that there's not duplication of effort, that their money's being spent efficiently. Kind of the bottom line is, if, if people do have these type of scenarios, come, come and talk to us about it, because we like to tailor what we do in this group in such a way that it actually solves, you know, so, so you're our customers, you know, for, for these metrics. So we'd, we'd very much like to, you know, solve the real problems that you do have. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, one thing maybe you could, you could express as an economic value is the, the um, cost of training somebody. Uh, so, you know, you've got students running through your programs, you're, you're spending funds to get somebody up to a certain level of, of competence. Certainly, um, there's a whole slew of economic metrics that almost everybody cares about in terms of being able to train people to a level of competence for the lowest possible cost and to reduce the time that it takes for, for somebody to get up to speed. So those are, you know, if those resonate with you, I mean, those are certainly economic metrics that would work, you know, almost with anybody. Yes? Uh, two questions. Oh, first question is, uh, could I request that your 9 a.m. Friday Pacific time meetings to be 20 hours before that? Because your 9 a.m. is my Midnight. Yeah. Well, one thing I'll say is our calls are so good that you, you're going to love getting up at midnight to, to join our calls. <laughs> They're just awesome. But beyond that, we'd absolutely love to have you part of it, and we will, you know, uh, coordinate to, to change the time to, to work for you. Right. So, so any opportunity we have. Um, yeah. So any opportunity we have to, to work with a group like that, um, you know, we can set up a time to talk, and we'd love to just tell people what we're what we're up to, uh, and I am pretty confident that you know when we get out there. Uh, and especially when we've got uh, our metrics backed up by live software tools, that it's going to be a really interesting discussion with a lot of organizations. So we'd love to do that. Okay, thank you all very much. And um, if you have other questions, come talk to me after uh, during the break.